Hi there, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and founder of Starfish Medical. It's been a while since we did our last regulatory and quality update, and there's been some changes at Starfish. We have three new people in our Toronto office. We have Bahari Ahmad Khan, we have Clara Lee, and we have Deborah Pinchev. So if you're in the East, you'll likely be working with them. We're really proud to add them to our team. Within the standards themselves, there's definitely been some changes. The big one is ISO 13485. We'll have a video focused on three main aspects of the standard for you coming right up. Uh, we're gonna focus on uh, some of the interesting areas, including uh, software validation, uh, supplier uh, management, and usability, which is an important change. So another thing you're gonna want to know about is the new MDSAP program, Medical Device Single Audit Program. This is coming at us in Canada, it's actually going to be required as of January 2019. So already the auditors are starting to jam up with requests to get companies certified to be able to sell anything in Canada. Uh, this time the FDA has really contributed a lot towards the standard and it's an international standard. So if you do get audited under this program, then that makes life easier for you with the FDA. Definitely something you want to pay attention to. And the final thing is the Europeans are changing their standard. The MDD, Medical Device Directive, is becoming MDR. The new ISO 1345-2016 standard has a lot of new requirements and you can see throughout of it that the FDA had a heavy influence on how it was written and how sections were renumbered. Uh, one of the major changes is the risk management approach that has to be implemented in a quality management system. We are used to be risk management only in assessing the medical device. Now we have to do it in-house on all of the processes that we are doing in the company. Another big change is a huge emphasis on following applicable regulations. Again, you can see behind that the FDA wanting to make sure that the companies that have uh, that comply with the new standard actually comply with the regulations at the same time. Uh, finally, uh, the change that I want to talk about is a new requirement for the software validation. Now, this is uh, dear to my heart because when I joined Starfish, I was insisting that we validate the softwares that are used in the company and everybody was looking at me, why? And I was saying, well, the FDA is coming and they did come, so it was good that we had those files in place. So we do have a procedure in place already for the software validation that is used in services and manufacturing, and we have done the validation of our key systems. So if you are not at that stage, I would advise that you start writing your procedure immediately and that you start uh, um, evaluating which systems you need to validate. Uh, some of the systems that you have to validate are electronic quality management system, CAPA system, complaint system, purchasing system, including like a whole ERP system that you're using because they are providing support to manufacturing. Now, the good news is to all this is, if you remember what I said at the beginning, we have a risk management approach to the processes, so you can use your risk management to justify the level of validation that you are applying to your validation. The new ISO 13485-2006 standard has a lot of changes. Um, I would like to talk about some changes in the purchasing section. So what is new with purchasing? Uh, first of all, the purchasing uh, process needs to have an established criteria. That means that this criteria has to be documented in a procedure and it has to be based on the performance of the supplier as well as proportionate to the risk associated with the medical device. The purchasing information also shall include uh, the product specifications and a written agreement with um, the supplier to notify of any changes to the purchase product. While this is not something that is new and a lot of manufacturers have done in the past, this is now a formal requirement. Also, um, there are some important changes to the verification purchase product section. And so the verification now, um, the verification activities have to be based on supplier evaluation and proportionate to the risk of the medical device. So what that means in reality is that if you have a very high risk medical device and let's say you have a supplier of a critical part that is not performing very well, that means that you're going to have to perform probably 100% verification of, of the parts that you're purchasing from this supplier based on your evaluation. Um, also, if a purchased part is being changed, you need to determine the effect of the change, 
on the manufacturing process as well as on the final manufactured medical device. Usability is a new requirement that has been added to design control. Actually, usability is not new to the companies that they submit their devices to the FDA and their devices are in compliance with 60601 that includes usability requirements. Usability is required to minimize the risk of user errors to ensure user safety and uh, ultimately user satisfaction in intended use environment. To reduce the risk of usability errors, usability needs to be addressed as early as possible in design phase. Prior to launching the device, uh, the device must be tested in simulated use environment per use scenario. IEC 6366 uh, assists manufacturers in evaluating the usability of their devices. Uh, this standard requires companies to have written procedure in place, usability plan, usability studies, as well as usability re reports in order to have a device uh, which is in compliance with all required standards. Take a look at our YouTube channel. There's always interesting content up there. This month particularly we have an uh, interesting new video showing how companies went from a, a audit finding 43 to a warning letter. We actually did the statistics of 160 findings of not adequate by the FDA, which is essentially how they decide what goes into a warning letter. And I think you'll find the findings quite interesting. Thanks again for listening. If you have any interesting uh, thoughts or any questions for us, we're always happy to talk to you. Thanks again.